the experiment by which we can find we can measure Ains modulus is a Koenig's method. Ains modulus by Koenig's method in this experiment we will find Ains modulus with the help of this arrangement. But the uh, question is that what is Ains modulus and why we have to find Ains modulus. So we will see what is Ains modulus? There is a question in our mind. Ains modulus is a ratio of stress and strain, where stress is ratio of force and area, while strain is ratio of change in dimensions per unit original dimensions, or specifically, strain can be defined as change in length per unit original length. If Ains modulus of the material is higher, then what will happen? If Ains modulus of a material is lower, then what will happen? If Ains modulus of material is higher, it means it is good for consideration or it means it is not good for consideration. These are the blanks to find after the completion of this experiment we will get answer automatically why we have to find Ains modulus what is the necessity to find Ains modulus by any means at present we are finding Ains modulus with Koenig's method so there is a breeze on which cow is walking and due to the stress Bending action takes place into the breeze. Similarly, a heavy vehicle is traveling on breeze and there is no bending action in this breeze. There is a stress, there is a stress. There is a stress by cow and there is a stress by heavy vehicle. Now, in this experiment, specifically we are using beam with the breadth B and depth D. So, breadth B to be found using vernier caliper or screw gauge micrometer. Similarly, depth to be measured with the vernier caliper or screw gauge micrometer and it is to be noted. Now, in this experiment, we will use meter scale and knife edges for resting that beam on these knife edges. There is an arrangement in which beam consists of two mirrors which are fitted mirror 1 and mirror 2. Distance between two mirrors M1 and M2 is denoted with the letter small a and this is a hook for attaching weights. See, there is a meter scale, mirror M1, mirror M2, this is a beam and this is a telescope. So, whole of this apparatus is now ready to take readings. Now, we will see distance between scale, meter scale and mirror M2, which is suppose capital D and distance between is, is suppose small l. See, now there is no weight and initial reading is to be taken into consideration as x0. So, this ray is incident on mirror 2 and it is reflecting back to the mirror 1 and it is reflecting from mirror 1 to the telescope. So, whatever the division is there on meter scale that is x0 is observed with the help of telescope and it is to be noted in the tabular form. Initially, no weight is there, then this reading is x0. Now, if weight 1 is applied, then that ray 1 is shifted to ray 2 and that division is 
x1 on the meter scale. This mirror is uh, shifting, it is bending slightly. This is the mirror M2 bending action. This is the bending action of the mirror M1. That mirror M2 is slightly bending and due to that, that division is shifting from x0 to x1. That is shown with a ray 2 in this diagram. Now we applied second weight. Again, shifting is from x0 to x2. Ray 1 to ray 2, shifting is from x0 to x2 is shown in this diagram. Again, mirror is bending M2 in this manner. Mirror M1 is bending in this manner. And this beam is bending at the center. And this bending action is nothing but the flexor. And it is to be noted x0 minus x2 or x2 minus x0, vice versa. Whichever is a bigger from that we have to deduct it. Again, apply third weight. Then from x0 to x3, ray 1 to ray 2. Again, bending action takes place into the mirror M2 as well as bending action taken place into the mirror M1 and bending action into the beam at the center is taking place. So whatever the weights are applied to this beam, then bending action takes place. And that bending action is being observed with the help of these mirrors and telescope and this meter scale arrangement as shown in this diagram. Now, fourth weight is applied. Again, from x0 to x4, ray 1 to ray 2. Again, bending action into the mirror M2 as well as bending action into the mirror M1 takes place. Again, beam is bending at the center due to application of these weights. And this is being observed with the help of telescope place air at the right hand side of this apparatus. Now we apply fifth weight. Again H0 to X5 that ray 2 is going to mirror M2, incident on mirror M2 and that is reflected back to the mirror M1 and from mirror M1 to telescope and this is happening due to bending action of the mirror M2 as well as mirror M1. Again, there is a bending action at the center of this beam too due to application of these weights which we have applied here. Now, whatever the data we have collected, we have observed to be written in a tabular form. Earlier, we have seen distance between two knife edges is equal to small l centimeter. Distance between the scale and opposite mirror M2 is capital D centimeter. Distance between the two mirrors M1 and M2 is equal to small a centimeter. Depth that is a D centimeter and breadth dash dash centimeter that is B centimeter. Mass applied to the beam at the center is from 0 gram, 100 gram, 200 gram, 300 gram, 400 gram, 500 gram in this manner. At the time of zero weight means there is no weight applied to the beam at the center. Then reading will be x0. That is the initial reading. After the application of 100 gram, then reading will be the x1. And shift in scale reading that is x centimeter is x1 minus x0. 200 gram weight is applied. Take the reading. 300 gram, take the reading. 400 gram, take the reading. And 500 gram, take the reading. This part is a loading part, means we are adding weights one by one. Now remove the weights one by one. Now take the reading, then remove 500. Now remove 400. Now remove 300 gram. Now remove 200 gram. Now remove 100 gram and now 
there is a at the time of zero so almost there is no difference in between these two links loading and unloading that we have to take all the links and angle of flexor to be calculated using formula phi is equal to x divided by 2 into bracket 2 into capital D plus 2 small a. This is the formula, there it is. Now this is the mass along y axis and flex surface along x axis. So find slope m divided by phi. So capital Y that is Eng's modulus is equal to 3 w a square divided by 4 pi bd cube is equal to 3 by 4 gl square divided by bd cube into capital M divided by pi which is equal to 3 gl square divided by 4 bd cube into slope dash dash dying per centimeter square. Eng's modulus of the material of the beam that is capital Y is equal to dying per centimeter square. So this is about the calculation or determination of Eng's modulus by Koenig's method. Now from this, our answer is that if Eng's modulus of a material is higher, it means it is good for consideration. And it is less, it means it is not good for consideration. So always Eng's modulus of the material to be higher and higher. Eng's modulus is nothing but the measure of stiffness of material, measure of strength of the material, how that material is strong, up to what extent that material having stiffness, how stiffer is it, that is to be measured, that is to be found. And with the help of various methods, of them, one is coiling method that we have deployed in the present experiment. So that is about the Eng's modulus by Koenig's method to find Eng's modulus uh, of uh, material which is given in the form of beam air.